Mary here has agreed to be our patient. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Would it be okay if we uh, practice and demonstrate a physical examination on you this morning? Absolutely. Thank you. So the first step was going to be uh, making sure that um, everything is comfortable and appropriate privacy has been maintained. As you can see, Mary has changed into a gown that appropriately covers her. And she also has um, a, placed a sheet over her legs uh, to keep uh, and maintain privacy. The room itself needs to be kept warm and also private. So you might want to check the window and make sure that the drapes are closed. In many rooms, there's a privacy curtain that can be utilized for uh, changing and also maintaining a, a level of privacy. Um, and then before, before uh, proceeding, you want to make sure you have all the equipment that you'll need. And so here on this table, we've laid out all the equipment that we're going to need for our physical examination. And of course, here on the wall, we have our other tools, as well as my trusty stethoscope. And then we never want to forget, before we start our physical examination, to make sure we wash our hands using soap and water or um, alcohol hand gel. So after we wash our hands, we can begin our physical examination. And I've already begun doing that by just generally observing Mary. I see she's wearing glasses. I'm observing her facial expression to see if she may be nervous or uncomfortable. Um, I'm observing her skin, looking for lesions or different colorations of her skin. I'm observing her breathing to see if she may be in distress in any type. And after making this general assessment, um, we move on to some vital signs. Um, the first vital sign is the weight, um, and the second is the height. This is utilized to help determine their body mass index, or BMI, and that will have been done uh, already prior to Mary arriving to do the exam today. So we'll, we'll proceed with the next vital sign, which is pulse. And to perform this, we're going to palpate her radial pulses. We'll do it both sides at the same time to feel for symmetry. And then I'll use my watch here to do a 15 second count. You may choose to go longer if her pulse is very slow or very fast. With a 15 second count times four, I get a pulse of 70. And normal pulse is anywhere between 60 and 90. Next, we'll observe for respiratory rate. And what I'll be doing is watching Mary's respirations and counting them for 30 seconds. I observe the rise of her shoulders and the rise of her chest with each breath. And in addition, I listen for each exhale. We count a little longer with respiratory rate because it tends to be quite a bit slower than the pulse, with a normal between 12 and 20. And her respiratory rate is about 12. So that's normal, Mary. Next, we'll move into the blood pressure. In this room, we have a blood pressure cuff that's attached to the wall. Sometimes you'll have one that is <coughs> not attached to the wall and is a portable model. And the first thing to assess is the size of the cuff to make sure it's appropriate for your patient. There's some markings on the cuff as you put it around the upper arm, just above the crease of the elbow. And when you see the range, you have to make sure that your artery marker falls within that range, and then you know you have the right size. Otherwise, you may need to switch to a larger or smaller cuff. Next. I'm going to support Mary's arm here between my elbow and my side, and I'm going to ask her to relax. Take a nice deep breath, Mary. As she does that, I'm going to get my stethoscope ready in my ears, <clears throat> and then I'm going to palpate her brachial pulse here at the crease of her elbow. I'm going to close my valve, and then I'm going to begin to pump up. Now, as I pump up, I palpated the pulse. When it disappears, I'll pump up another 20 or 30 millimeters further. Switch over to my stethoscope. 
and then gradually deflate. Going down two to four millimeters per beat. And listen for the top number, which is where the sound starts, and the bottom number where the pulsations disappear. The top number are systolic. Today was 106, and your diastolic was 62, and that's normal.